men arrested in connection with a being behind a local Fitchburg night spot are arraigned on attempted murder charges. A 33-year-old Lemonster man is found dead in his home after a short police standoff. And could Amazon be coming to our area? All this and lots more coming up next on Our City News. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Ellison and the entire Our City News team. Two men were arraigned at Fitchburg District Court on attempted murder charges after an incident on September 30th behind a local night spot that left one young man with serious injuries. Glenn Fossa was at the courthouse and has the story. Glenn? Two defendants, Saquon McGirt and Robert Boulay III, uh, allegedly the defendants in this attack on a 22-year-old man that left him unconscious in the parking lot of a local bar, uh, McGirt represented by Patrick Burke of Lemonster, the attorney, and Boulay represented by at least public counsel right now from what we know from court records. Fitchburg Sentinel reporting that this left the 22-year-old man unconscious when they contacted police. As for now, they are arraigned on charges including attempted murder right here at the Fitchburg District Court. Our City News reporting. The SWAT team swarmed a house in Lemonster on Monday after a man barricaded himself inside his house. The home then caught on fire, forcing investigators to back out until the fire was extinguished. Police then re-entered the house where the man was found deceased. Outside this Lemonster quiet neighborhood home, a man in his 30s known as Sean in the news accounts uh, had a crisis. There was a Section 35 issued police went to serve that warrant and uh, it turned into a very hazardous situation where something may have been thrown out of the window, according to police accounts and news reports. We think this uh, uh, front section may be that area. And then, of course, the ensuing fire when that individual inside in crisis set the house ablaze. Uh, EMS and fire officials, of course, responding and responding to that threat and, unfortunately, the death of the individual inside the home. First responders, the state police uh, response, all receiving accolades for how they kept this neighborhood safe during this crisis and incident. 33-year-old Sean Cahill, uh, the subject of this call, uh, unfortunately uh, deceased uh, during this uh, crisis and intervention. Um, more to come uh, from our city news and back to you. In national news, General Motors has agreed to pay $120 million to settle a state attorney general probe of mishandling the ignition switch defect. The latest financial hit to the Detroit auto giant over a safety crisis linked to numerous deaths and injuries. GM's agreement, disclosed Thursday, settles consumer protection investigations with 49 states and Washington, D.C., stemming from the faulty switch, which can slip from the run position and cut power in millions of older cars, disabling safety features, including airbags. The defect has been linked to 124 deaths. The U.S.'s largest automaker said it has reached a constructive resolution with the state attorney general that, in addition to the payment, assures GM will continue ongoing improvements made to ensure the safety of its vehicles. State Attorney General alleged GM failed to disclose the safety defect in a timely manner and misled consumers when marketing their vehicles. The California Department of Insurance said on Thursday its preliminary estimate for insured wildfire losses was $1.5 billion, based on claims received by the state's eight largest insurers, adding that they expect the number to rise. Since erupting on October 8th and 9th, the blazes in parts of Northern California have blackened more than a quarter of a million acres and destroyed almost 7,000 structures, including homes, wineries, and other commercial buildings. More than 15,000 people remain displaced, as the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection said on Thursday. Residents of Northern California's wine country, left homeless by the state's deadliest ever wildfires, could be temporarily housed in federal government trailers. Officials said that the death toll has, from the blaze has rose all the way up to 42. We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV.
Enterprise, along with Fitchburg State University, sponsored a debate featuring candidates running for city council at large. The nine candidates answered questions posed by a three-person panel. The debate was moderated by FSU President Richard Lapidus. You can watch the entire debate on demand at FATV.org. So if we can pro- continue to promote these students sticking around and getting together, you know, they can take one space downtown Fitchburg and they can have eight people uh, working out of it. So a creative economy is more than uh, we may realize because there's so much potential in these students. Let's I believe on. that the, uh, the vast majority of our residents would prefer to spend $20 million on our roads than $20 million rehabbing old City Hall, frankly. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's move on. If they spend $20 million on the roads, can we please be upfront and honest with them and not give them buzzwords so we can get a vote? If they do $20 million, that only solves 32% of the problem and kicks off the rest of it for another 30 or 40 years. So all of the roads that aren't getting taken care of, what do you say to those residents? See, it's red meat to the residents. Please, don't buy it. Okay? So, let's no, let's be honest. Let's the enemy of the good. If we can't pave every road, let's not put any, let's not allocate any of that $20 million to our roads. Be sure to tune in to FATV for live election coverage starting at 7 p.m. on November 7th. Our city news crew will be reporting at all polling locations. You're watching Our City News on FATV. giant Amazon may be coming to our area. Local cities are bidding to have Amazon's new facility in their communities. Over 400 acres of public and private land and millions in tax breaks have been promised to Amazon if the online retail giant chooses to build its second headquarters in Lemonster. In a bid to bring Amazon to our area, Lemonster City purchasing agent Greg Chapdelaine said that special tax assessments offered by the city would save the company $405 million in its first 13 years. The city is also offering a combined 457 acres of land in Lemonster that Amazon could choose from for the 8.1 million square feet of buildings the company hopes to build. In more local news, four Oakmont students have taken on the challenge to raise money in an effort to provide those in need of service dogs through a new fundraising campaign. Mayree Dandineau has the story. For some people, therapy animals are an essential part of their everyday lives. Today, some students have trouble getting therapy animals because of their cost. So, I am here with Amanda Porter, who has come up with a solution for this with her foundation, her nonprofit organization, called Pause for Psych. Can you tell us more about Pause for Psych, Amanda? Yeah, so Pause for Psych is an organization, it's a nonprofit, and it's run through the United Way Youth Venture, which is um, a nationwide um, kind of like a coordinator, and they basically kind of host groups all over the U.S., and I think there's also one in India, too, um, but they kind of give us a platform to carry out our ideas. So, our idea, Pause for Psych, is a nonprofit organization that is going to host events that bring the community together um, and also encourage people to cope with mental illness. And it's mostly our most important goal is to provide some funding and some help for people who need therapy dogs because it can cost up to $5,500 on average. So um, people who need therapy dogs, I mean, they need the money to get that because it's a necessity. Mm-hmm. And so what are some of the plans you have for the future with your organization? Yeah, so um, we did just launch like last month, and right now we're working on kind of marketing and social media and really just getting our goal and our um, ideas out there because it is really important, and we want people to know about it before we start Mm -hmm. heading into actual projects and events. 
Um, but we're looking forward to um, we're connecting we're collecting I'm sorry we're collecting um, old clothing items that are gently used from the community um, we have boxes we have two boxes in the school and I'm going to try and reach out to the middle school as well and try to get them up there too um, but we're collecting gently used clothing items and we're going to cut them up and braid them into dog toys which we're going to sell at future events um, to raise money for the therapy dogs and we're also going to be hosting some events probably later on in the spring when it's warmer out. Um, we're thinking of maybe a 5K or like a run with your dog type of event. Mm -hmm. um, it's not solidified yet, but we are kind of in the early planning process. So Right. And Amanda, you're a junior at Oakmont Regional High School, correct? Yes. Right. So um, what has maybe been an obstacle for you being so young trying to start this? Um. I honestly, I want to say that it's been, like, really hard, but honestly, like, we had a really great idea, and I, everything kind of fell together, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that it really limits me in a way, um, especially because the United Way Youth Venture is really helping out with, mm -hmm. um, they offer, like, seed funding, so we haven't presented our idea to officials yet, but they offer a really nice platform for people to um, kind of, like, show what we're here for. And I have the perfect group of girls, um, Morgan McMaster, Madison McMaster, their sisters, and then Taylor Gilbert are all helping me in this. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a lot. But they've done so much for us, and um, it's, been really, it's been really smooth so far. I mean, we haven't really had any huge events yet because we're just starting. But, I mean, I think that the age thing, I don't think it limits us. I think we're doing pretty good right now. <laughs> wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful cause, and I'm, I'm really glad to see that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to see young people getting into the community and really starting things up. So if people want to donate to your cause, how can they reach you? So um, you can email us at pauseforpsych at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram and a Twitter, which is also at pauseforpsych. Um, it's just that. It's not the Gmail or anything. Um, and right now we're kind of just giving out information on what we're hoping to do in the future. Um, we are going to have a GoFundMe or some sort of um, donation account set up soon. So if you want more information on that, you can contact us at any of that social media. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for watching. This has been May Reed Dandino. Back to the newsroom. Thank you. You're watching Our City News on FATV. young kids and are looking for a great place to shop for clothes, toys, and more fine items, a brand new store has come to Main Street right here in Fitchburg. Glenn Foster stopped by to talk to the owner and see what's going on. The process of progress, of course, includes new business on Main Street here in the city, right in the 300 block of Main Street Children's Closet. With me, Jillian Prescott. Jillian, great to see you today. A for-profit organization, a consignment for uh, focusing on children. Yes. And so tell us just a little bit about the wares and, of course, what's in stock and what's in store for Children's Closet. We pretty much have anything that you would need to raise a child. It goes from um, newborn stuff all the way to, like, ages 14, 16 in both boys and girls. We have um, baby and children furniture, toys, 
costumes, jackets, coats, um, seasonal wear, bedding. <laughs> yeah, so uh, really, really uh, an amalgam of, of choice for shoppers to come see what uh, they might pick up. And, of course, it's right here, and it's local right on Main Street. Yes, we're right next to the Fitchburg Jade. You could also grab some lunch while you're here. It's delicious. And that is what walkability in downtown Main Street, a calmer Main Street. A lot of folks are uh, giving us feedback on that now, and uh, we're moving ahead. Yes, we really wanted to bring some positivity to Main Street and thinking that a family store would really be a positive change for Main Street. Yeah. For our city news, Glenn Fawcett, downtown in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, 01420. A little bit of Amish culture comes to Lemonster, and Glenn Fossa has the story. And right here at Central Flag and Main Street here in Lemonster, over the uh, line doing some stories this morning, we happened upon this Amish cart and, uh, of course, some furniture now on sale here at the uh, store, uh, well-known and managed by the mayor, Dean Mazzarella, uh, bearing in mind, of course, uh, that... Uh, this is fall and a great time to think about uh, bringing a little Lancaster County, a little Amish country, and some of those recipes and decor items right to your home this fall. Our City News reporting from Lemonster, Glenn Foss. Road improvements, new sidewalks, and paving continues in the city of Fitchburg. Glenn Fossa was in the neighborhood near the college checking out all of the action. And as the candidates give their messages right on FATV, we know that they're talking about the Chapter 90 funding that's going on, putting roads together, improving our infrastructure, and of course, in the forefront, how safe and how much more pavement needs to be done in the city. Uh, Chapter 90 funds about $1.2 million and then backfilled with some other cash from the city council uh, approvals of over $100,000, paving the city of Fitchburg. As the construction continues, and it's a big hotbed of uh, controversy, or co at least conversation with the candidates this election season, right here we see concrete sidewalks being revisited and renewed here in the University District, the east side of the city of Fitchburg. Pavement going on right behind us as the contractor lays it down, smooths it out just before winter begins. And this is a very important issue for how the school kids will go to and from the places of higher learning each and every day as they become more fit uh, going to and from school. And uh, right here in our city, the city of Fitchburg, our city news continues. The campaign to raise money for new lights at Crocker Field continues. The GoFundMe page has reached almost $4,000. Glenn Fossa stopped by Crocker Field to check in on the project. And if you'd like to donate, go to GoFundMe.com slash Let There Be Light. And right behind me, the concession stand, which is now fully operational for Fitchburg High School games right here at the hallowed and historic ground of Crocker Field. But behind me, of course, the light project. Lighting very, very important for the night games and, of course, our telecast. So as the GoFundMe page continues, let there be light. Crocker Field, let there be light. Uh, Crocker Field Restoration Committee Incorporated still looking to fund that very important purchase. From our city news, Glenn Fossa reporting. Smart growth continues in the city of Fitchburg. Let's take a look at some reports as this series continues. I'm Stephanie Allison, and this is an Our City News special feature about our Smart Growth Corridor. We're here on River Street, which runs right by the yarn mill, and this brand new sidewalks that were done for the Smart Growth Corridor, which promotes more walkable, bikeable, and public transportation options for the city of Fitchburg. Now, the Smart Growth Options started in 2011, and Fitchburg was given a $130,000 grant to start these processes. The Smart Growth Zoning District in Fitchburg that the City Council recently passed is a area of the city that is adjacent to the downtown. It's, um, it has mill buildings, it has the river, it has the rail, and it's actually nestled in a valley amongst a lot of uh, historic neighborhoods. It's an area that there, that there are uh, currently over a million square feet of old mill space, a space that we would like to see developed. So the Smart Growth District actually creates um, further incentives for developers to come here because not only is there uh, commercial and industrial uses allowed by right, but now there will be residential uses allowed by right, and that gives more flexibility to developers as they're looking at these properties. We've completed the yarn mill, and that's now rentable apartments, which are beautiful, and we have all of these great new sidewalks. And this is all based around the new Wachusett train station. 
And Stephanie, it was not that long ago our very own Charlie Baker, governor of the Commonwealth, was here introducing Wind Development's Knock Edge River Mills right here off of Sheldon Street in the city. Well, this is just a great example of uh, state-local collaboration on an important project to revitalize the neighborhood. And uh, one of the things Karen Polito, Lieutenant Governor Polito, and I talked about a lot when we campaigned was that we wanted to work with local communities and especially with gateway cities uh, to help them revitalize their downtowns and certain parts of their uh, of their urban core. And uh, for us, this project is just a great example of uh, how local folks working with state folks and working with a terrific developer who's done this many times can lead to a terrific uh, a terrific outcome. This project is uh, going to be almost 100 units of housing, uh, 60 uh, market and 40 uh, affordable. It's a the building itself has incredible bones. The view people are going to have of the river when this whole thing is done is going to be spectacular, and it's going to be a major addition to this neighborhood. Our city, of course, travels out on the road to the Yarn Works, which is now leasing up. Incredible apartments available for folks that can walk downtown, do a bunch of things right here in our city. As the smart growth uh, continues, we're going to see more and more of the uh, landscape, streetscape, and these kinds of uh, improvements in the city as we go along. Here north of Maine, Glen Fox also reporting for our city news. These two east side multifamily dwellings are ripe for renovation right here in the city of Fitchburg, and much is going on in that regard. However, abandoned properties still do exist and pose special problems for the city of Fitchburg. Kevin Holder, a manager right here at 102 Myrtle Avenue, student housing example right here, a beautiful renovated home. Uh, Kevin, good to see you today. I understand there's more to this. Um, yes, we have several uh, projects going on in the area, uh, developing homes for not only students, but uh, people in the area, affordable housing, uh, very good for the city. This brings a uh, larger income into the city. We all know that the college is growing in leaps and bounds, and affordable housing is very nice to have here in the community. And some students, of course, prefer to live off campus. Gives them a little bit more freedom, but it's a really good experience for them. That's true. It's uh, it's quite nice to have him move into the neighborhood and develop these homes that have been neglected for many a year. And now to see them come back strong, it's it's quite honoring to the public here. Yeah, and we see that he goes right to period detail. He's got some real features to it. And there's a big push of smart growth in the city. There seems to be this renaissance of reinvestment into the city of Fitchburg. That is true. We see that throughout the community here. Of course, I don't have to say that Fitchburg is a fine city, and this even makes it greater. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, from uh, Falcon Nests. Right here on Myrtle Avenue. In the city of Fitchburg, our city news continues. One of our favorite places on River Street is seeing major changes. Our city news stopped by to see what's going on. And this week we see the evidence of the River Street Dairy Queen uh, obviously going through a tremendous facelift of family frozen favorites uh, here in the city. Uh, as Fitchburg residents see a lot of building going on. In this segment of our city news, we've already seen so much going on in terms of the continued development here in the city. As economic growth continues here in the city, Glenn Fossa was out and about checking out a business right here on Kimball Street going through a complete transformation. It's more than just a buzzword. Economic development continues right here on Kimball Street, Route 2A, uh, and Route 12 westbound. In this lane here, a new refueling station, convenience store, part of the Prime Fuel Group. Uh, we knew the uh, two locations, one here in Kimball and across the bridge just over near the Upper Common. So it's not just a buzzword. This is real. Fitchburg is literally uh, seeing more and more growth as we speak with this project. Glenn Foster, our City News. This week on FATV. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Barbara and you with guests from Arc of Opportunity. Wednesday at 7 p.m., discussing Fitchburg Now on Cancer Awareness. Friday at 7 p.m., Fitchburg High School Football. And on our government channel, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., FSU's Sentinel Debate continues. Looking for a bike to use in the new bike lane downtown? The Fitchburg Public Library has bikes for you to use during business hours. Glenn Fossa stopped by the library to find out more. 
Yes, so the library is loaning six bike bikes or so. Uh, they will go out for one week at a time. You have to be a Fitchburg resident with an adult Fitchburg library card in good standing, and you have to be over 18. We do loan helmets if people want to use them. We encourage helmets, but they're not required by law, so we don't have to have you use them. They do come with a lock. We ask that you lock the bike up when you're not using it, including the front wheel, so it doesn't get stolen. And that's really what it is. We did get some funding from the Fun and Fit grant through the Board of Health. I believe it was from Mock to start with. So that was part of the what paid for these as well as many donations. So Joe Caddy brought it to our attention. He said it was something he would really like to see happen. He has been places where they do loan bikes and had spoken to the gentleman at the Keene State College who loans some. They have, I think, 250 bikes. So he thought we should be part of that. One of the things people do keep wanting to donate bikes to us, we're not accepting donations directly here at the library. People have to contact Joel, Joel Caddy, and he will deal with that because they have to be in certain condition for us to be able to accept them. We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. on FATV. With Halloween creeping up on us, safety is the number one priority in order to have a fun holiday. Our City News has seven great tips to keep everyone safe. Plan a route in advance so you know where you're going. It's always smart to wear comfy shoes. Stay well lit and carry a flashlight. Make sure costumes are short enough so kids don't trip. Avoid masks because sometimes you just can't see through them. Use flexible props and always check your child's candy and take some for yourself. This year's Trick or Treat is on Main Street and will be happening on Saturday, October 28th at 12 to 2 p.m. Games, raffles, face painting, and balloon twisters. Come join the fun while supporting our local businesses. The Historical Society presents Music of the Gaslight Era by John Root on Thursday, October 26th at 6.30 p.m. at the Historical Society, 781 Main Street. This program is supported by Fitchburg Cultural Council. Stop by for a great evening of music and fun. Thanks for watching Our City News. I'm Stephanie Allison. If you have any news you'd like to share, email us at rcitynewsfitchburg at gmail.com. This episode is brought to you by KCMC Management, our local Dunkin' Donuts. From all of us here at FATV and our city news, have a wonderful day.